Years ago, I used to own a 2007 Ford Mustang GT, 4.6 liter V8, 300 horsepower, and boy, did I think that car was fast. That intoxicating V8, those sounds, I even had aftermarket exhaust on it. And that was my introduction into American muscle cars, and I was immediately hooked. The C5 Corvette, the C5 Z06, I was huge fans of those cars. In fact, that's a missed opportunity. The 405 horsepower, 5.7 liter V8 Corvette Z06, I wish I had bought that. It, it was something that I test drove multiple times. I don't know why I didn't. But then my fascination continued on to the C6 Z06, add another 100 horsepower. These were amazing cars and they were improving so much generation after generation. And sure, the interiors back then weren't that good and the handling on these cars left much to be desired, but American Muscle V8, there's just something special about that that no other car can replicate. Then came the C7 Corvette, which was really a step above the prior generations. It looked and felt like an exotic supercar and everything was so much more refined about it than prior generations. And now we have this, the 2023 C8 Corvette, and the same company that made all of those previous versions have made this, which is incredible. This is a true American supercar. And if this is what American muscle has turned into, sign me up, where's mine? Now I've driven a lot of older American muscle cars and owned a couple, and this car doesn't feel like anything a Ford or a GM would create. The fact that GM built this American supercar is absolutely crazy because this feels like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. And when you drive it, it feels like it should be hundreds of thousands of dollars, multiple six figures. And the fact that you can get this, a base level C8 Corvette for the mid 60s is insane. This is such an obtainable supercar. And that's what I love about American cars is because they're not so far out of reach that nobody can have them. For that price tag to have a mid-engine supercar like this going from zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds, you can't get that anywhere else on the planet. This car has exotic written all over it. And where else could you buy a car like this for $65,000? Pop the trunk and see this beautiful 6.2 liter V8 pumping out 490 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque, mind-blowing. As impractical as this Corvette might be, you still have some space back here behind the engine, maybe for a golf bag or two. And also in the front where there's a decent amount of space for maybe a couple overnight bags. But remember, this car is not meant to be a practical daily driver with a ton of space. The beauty about cars like this, especially American car manufacturers and American cars, is these are actually drivable. Like you could drive this on a day-to-day -day basis if you wanted to, and here's why. Even though this is a two-seater sports car, it's low to the ground, it's a tight and snug fit in here, as you might expect, it's still reasonably comfortable. The seats are great. Obviously the quality fit and finish are really great in here. And even with the prior Corvettes with the C6s and C7s, they were still decent places to be inside. And I could actually see myself driving this on a daily basis. But ultimately when it comes down to it, why I love American muscle or why anybody might like American muscle, especially these V8s, is this. What I love about the C8 Corvette and American sports cars in general is they don't have that same sort of factor of intimidation that you feel when you get into like a AMG or a Porsche 911 Turbo, these German sports cars. Forget about Ferraris and Lambos, but just getting into the high-end European sports cars, I don't know what it is. I think in the back of the mind, you consider the maintenance cost, the, how much you paid to buy this car. All of those things just weigh you down, but Driving these American cars, not only are they cheaper to buy, but they're also cheap to maintain. I checked with the Porsche dealer for maintenance of my Macan, and they have a labor rate of $500 an hour. That is absolutely insane. Compare that to a Chevy dealer, I don't think their labor rates are gonna be anywhere close to that. And so when you drive the C8 or any Corvette or a Mustang, you know that if something breaks, you're not gonna have to declare bankruptcy just trying to get your car fixed. So you can cruise around in a C8 and just feel more at peace.
Another reason why I really like this C8 and I think it could be such a great daily driver is it's, it's so comfortable and calm, especially in touring mode where the suspension softer and it's quiet on the interior. It's not crazy loud. The V8 is pretty calm and tame. And driving this around, you're really not gonna think about this massive engine behind you, pumping out 490 horsepower, zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. All that craziness that this car contains, it's kept under check. And if you just wanted a calm, peaceful, quiet drive, you could actually get that in the C8. And I love that aspect about it. And having this as a daily driver, you have this massive V8 with its amazing noise and those sounds. How could you not love those in a daily driver? The V8 in this thing not only sounds amazing, the handling is so impressive that the combination of both of those things in this car makes the driving experience second to none. And that noise, oh man. When you get on it, that V8 just completely opens up. That's incredible. That's a roar if I've ever heard one. That's exactly the reason why I'm such a big fan of American cars and these V8s because they just have it nailed so perfectly. And with today's cars, with everything going electric, I'm just so glad that this kind of investment keeps taking place because if GM and Ford decided to shut down all their V8s and all of these amazing machines, then that's gonna be a really sad day for people like me and those of you that love V8s out there. I love driving this C8. What an incredible machine. This is so easy to drive, so much power, such great handling. And it's not even just a C8. If you look at the Ford GT350, the GT350R, these are amazing vehicles that Ford and GM are coming out with. And ultimately, isn't that what auto enthusiasm is all about? driving cars like this and these are so livable they're very easy to drive they're so much fun and they're not incredibly expensive to where nobody can afford one i wish more people bought this and drove these around but it's a shame not that many people drive these everywhere and they're mostly garage queens but if i had one i wouldn't be able to stop driving it and the gas mileage is so reasonable 19 miles per gallon from this kind of an engine this kind of a car this is why American muscle cars are such great values and they just keep getting better and better. These are nothing like what I'm used to, what I drove way back in the day. Today's American cars are of a different level and I don't think most people realize it. I think if people really knew what these cars were about and most people had an awareness, there would be a lot more of these cars out on the road. But it's good that there aren't because you can buy one of these and most people will think that you're driving a Ferrari. A new Ferrari that only costs you $65,000. What a deal. So as I was filming this, a cop car pulled by right behind here and they asked me if we wanted to race. Sure, why not? <laughs>